Um, talk a bit about the campus because that leads us to architecture. And I think the, the best way to experience the world of Vitra is really to be, to be and see that campus. It's, it's just, it, it's, we're a Swiss company, but the campus is just on the other side of the border near Basel and in a little town called uh, Weil am Rhein. Um, it started as a production site and with very irrelevant uh, buildings many years ago. And in 81, we had a big fire which destroyed more, more than half of the whole uh, site. And this was the, the big chance of a, uh, of a rethinking of the, of the site, actually the beginning of what we call now campus. And uh, at that time, I just had met uh, Nicholas Grimshaw, the British architect, and after the fire, the, the option was either we just ask a builder, a builder to build a building because we had to be very fast, six months. We had a, a, a six months uh, insurance uh, covering. So after six months we had to build again or ask an architect. And fortunately, uh, I don't know, again, again, we had the courage at the time, we asked an architect. And so we, Grimshaw came and in six months we were producing again. So it was a very fast, interesting industrial building. And that was the beginning of this idea of working with interesting architects on the site. Grimshaw then developed, we asked Grimshaw to develop a master plan and if, if that master plan had realized now the Vitra site would be full of Grimshaw buildings, also interesting but maybe less interesting. Uh, anyhow, uh, I then met Frank Gehry and uh, we, for, for my father's 70th birthday we we commissioned a, a sculpture by Oldenburg and Oldenburg and Gehry were friend so I got Acquainted with Gay, we talked about furniture, and etc. Actually, we did furniture together, and uh, but of course it was interesting to build. And Gary had never built outside the states, and this, this uh, I've seen that with architecture in Los Angeles, where I was traveling because of Eames at the time. So I, it was very exciting. So when we had the next building, we didn't build a, a Grimshaw building, but a Gary building, and just uh, to to put a bit something else on, we put the little building for the museum. I was too shy to think of a museum, we call, called it shed. We had a little shed in front of the factory and this became the De Vitra Design Museum. And then this was very, very so satisfying, successful. So f for each new uh, building we asked somebody, another architect. We also thought it was like a little city with these different buildings. It would be more interesting than have sort of an industrial uniformity. And so, and it happened. I mean, that sounds like a big plan. It was not at all. I happened to meet Zaha and uh, she had never built. And I had a little project, so it became her first building. And I happened to meet Ando and he had never built outside Japan. So it became uh, uh, our little um, uh, conference center. And of course, these people were not beginners at the time. But it was interesting for them, they had never built in Europe or outside of their country. So I could get the interest of these people in spite of a very, very small project. Then we had another building with Caesar, and uh, then a long pause. Actually, we, we didn't build until this, for 16 years, until this, uh, is it still here now? The herzog Dömeron building had to do with economical, economical developments, new ideas, because I mean, in, in, in manufacturing, just in time came, you needed less space before we always had to build new factories. Now it was no longer the issue because, etc. So in the meantime, we did small interventions. We, we found a little, uh, through somebody, a little gas station by Jean Pouvet from 54, which we put on the side. We found a Mr. Fuller Dome, which we use a lot. We, we asked Jasper Morrison to, to do a bus station small interventions. And then this year came, came um, the, the, the Vitra House by, by Herzog Dömer that you saw the images of, which works very well. 